uh, the opening of our um, international symposium. We'd like us to uh, address uh, Dr. Abdel Awi Khalifa, uh, His Excellency, uh, the Minister for uh, Infrastructure and uh, uh, Utilities. Uh, we'd like also to welcome from Akishpa, from DAD, Dr. Gareth Gimei from uh, Ministry of Higher Education, and Dr. Gunter Pinkold from GIZ. Um, we're just going to take uh, 40 minutes, add these notes. Um, we'd like also to welcome all of the guests and speakers that we have uh, received from all over the world. Thank our students and the guests that uh, honored us by coming to this symposium. Um, first, we start with uh, a welcome note from Dr. Hussein Aisa, the president of Ancient University. and discuss ways to boost our friendship and program cooperation. On behalf of Anshans University and in my own name, I wish to extend a very warm welcome to all the distinguished guests. I also wish to take this opportunity to convey my cordial greetings and best wishes to the brotherly dead people. Dear colleagues, with an Anshans University future development vision and strategy, it aims to further strengthen its contribution within the academic domain in the MENA and world. The university already hosts several thousands, several of the Arab students, several thousands of the Arab students within its mainstream undergraduate and postgraduate. However, among the milestones of, it, of its development is to initiate and establish international master programs within its faculties. Then the C integrated Urbanist and sustainable design within the Faculty of Engineering fulfills an important part of these milestones. We want to stress upon our full support for, for the further development and consolidation of this MSc program within Anshans University. Ladies and gentlemen, with a large number of distinguished participants, Anshans University is honored to host the second symposium of the integrated urban dialogues. We are sure that this meeting will be a memorable and mark a new and innovative contribution to the university within the field of international research and scientific cooperation. Let us join hands and work for a bright future for, for, for us all. In conclusion, I wish the second symposium of the integrated evidence dialogues very success. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hussein. And uh, now I'd like to pass uh, the microphone to Frau Stahl from Ankerstahl from GRD uh, to give us uh, an address note from, uh, on behalf of GRD. Thank you very much. Excellency, dear Professor Anissa, President of the Einstein University, dear Professor Eigenmeier, dear Professor Zahi, dear EOS team, Dear scholarship holders, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's a great pleasure of mine to welcome you all on behalf of the German Academic Exchange Service, and it's also my pleasure to convey best wishes and best regards from the German Funding Ministries, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, BMZ, and the Federal Ministry of Education and Research, BMBF. Let me start with three clear points on the symposium Integrated Urbanism. Firstly, it is addressing a topic of high relevance. Secondly, it is the second in a relatively new series of symposia on integrated urbanism. This series began at the end of the last year in Stuttgart and provides the opportunity for intensive exchange among upcoming and experienced experts from Europe and from the MENA region. 
Thirdly, and especially worthy to mention, the project from which this event series emerged is not much older itself. The German Arab Masters Program, Integrated Urbanism and Sustainable Design, operated by the Anshams University Cairo and University of Stuttgart. This symposium takes up the integrated and interdisciplinary approach of the master's program, carrying it forward with students, academics, and international experts in an exemplary way. But that is not all. The mere exchange of specialized know-how and experiences does not necessarily lead to changes in practice. The know-how, the research results, must be communicated to a wide range of players at both the political and the private sector levels. This is a huge challenge. And these are the very aspects of that a symposium will be taking up tomorrow when it addresses questions such as what is the relationship between planners and decision makers in approaches to increase urban resilience, or what role could new governance arrangements play in attempts to improve urban resilience in the context of poverty and widespread urban environmental degradation. The master's program Integrated Urbanism and Sustainable Design embodies a new generation of cross-border postgraduate programs remaining in line with four other German Arab master's programs that have been jointly established between German and Arab universities. Four core themes related to the main challenges, amongst others for the Arab region, have been defined for the German-Arab Development Cooperation, which also apply to the higher education sector, water, economy, energy, education. And in 2011, the postgraduate program IUSD was added. Also, it sails under another program flag, the DAD so-called program for countries in transition, and is jointly financed by two German ministries and by the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education. Nonetheless, it supplements the scheme of German Arab Masters programs perfectly. Apart from partially different financial models, all five master's programs are connected in experiences, in experiencing the opportunities and challenges of a new, particular way of learning. Graduates from various Arab countries in the MENA region study together with German graduates at an Arab at a German university. The variety of disciplines and cultures represented by the students leads to a fruitful exchange of ideas, insights, and also methods. This emphasizes the bicultural and interdisciplinary character of the program in a particular way. The training target is to enable these graduates to act as a hinge between science, practice, and political advisory activities. Also, also, interdisciplinarity and interculturality have become catchwords. Dealing with this constructively in the daily routine is often challenging enough. The successful implementation of these master's programs is also a good example for breaking new ground. Not only do the students from various Arab countries, together with their fellow students from Germany, get the opportunity to encounter another country, exchange ideas and experiences. This also applies to lecturers and to staff involved. Thereby, the Arab partner universities, as well as their German partners, not only enhance their international course offers, they also attract more and more students and also lecturers from other countries, which will contribute to the Arab partner universities evolving into regional centers. A vision could be, and some of the courses already practice this, to open these master's courses to a wider region and guarantee their sustainability. 
Attracting students from other continents would undoubtedly open new perspectives, above all for the South-South exchange. Integrated urbanism is definitely a topic with growing significance worldwide. Bringing the IMSD closer to this goal requires the untiring commitment of the participating universities, their lecturers and students, and also the long-term support of the corresponding funding programs, whether for scholarships, lecture mobility, or the implementation of excursions and case studies. Therefore, it is especially pleasing, and I would like to emphasize this on this point, that we are on a good way towards successfully acquiring funding from the three donor ministries for a second phase until 2017. Thank to the three ministries for their support, which is extremely <coughs> essential to consolidate the IUC program and to have a solid foundation for further activities and for further development. One of the most critical factors for success and is and remains, however, the trustful cooperation between the partner universities. This cooperation must be based on an understanding of different interests, on understanding existing potential, on understanding the cultural context of the respective partners. Honored guests, please allow me now to take the opportunity to thank you of thanking both universities, especially the dedicated and motivated coordinators of this postgraduate program, IOC, for the work that has been accomplished up to this point and for the excellent cooperation. On this basis, it is possible to, secure, to securely anchor the master's program and create a sustainable specialist network. For us, the German Academic Exchange Service, the network idea is very important, especially within the framework of our postgraduate courses. Current students are encouraged to interlink with each other during their study time, to strengthen the contacts and exchange with other disciplines and approaches. This year in June, at the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development, the so-called Rio Plus 20 conference, world leaders, along with thousands of participants from governments, the private sector, NGOs and other groups came together to discuss how can we reduce poverty, advance social equity and ensure environmental protection on an ever more crowded planet. Precisely because of the modest final outcome of Rio Plus 20, action rather than well-meaning intentions is needed. We live in a time of unprecedented global challenges. Current development paradigms and economic patterns have led to a multiple and growing social, environmental and economic crisis. And to achieve sustainability, change is inescapable. And indeed, when we look at pressing issues like climate change, energy supply, food security or urbanization, change has become imperative not only for the so-called developing world. We need to mobilize knowledge for change and we need to turn knowledge into action. Dear conference participants, against this background, learning about and discussing the implications of the interrelations in the interdisciplinary field of architecture, urban planning and landscape design, it is a significant contribution. Your discussion and the conference results will, I am fully convinced, have a productive impact on the master's program, IUSD. This is a unique opportunity for the current IUSD students to meet with international experts, to learn from them, and to gain an appropriate awareness of their professional and personal responsibility in structuring the world of tomorrow. I wish the symposium fruitful discussions and much, much success. Thank you very much.
Thank you, uh, Ms. Stang, for this uh, wonderful supporting uh, words. And now, uh, with Dr. Gelel Igeniani, um, the first uh, secretary of the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education. His Excellency Professor Abdel Ali Khalifa, Minister of Water and Water Utilities. His Excellency Professor Hussein Isa, President of Ayesha's University. Dear Mrs. Enkerstad from the VRP office in Germany. Dear colleagues from GIZ in Germany. Dear ladies and gentlemen. The Ministry of Higher Education in Egypt and the DRD office working closely for several decades, both supporting top-level postgraduate research in many fields and working together to establish an intercultural perspective of mutual understanding and cooperation in different scientific fields. As various research programs were conducted in collaboration with German institutes. Many Egyptian scholars received their degrees and still are. The outcome of this process made significant contribution to the quality of education received in local institutes and the progress of research projects as well. Within this cooperative Framework, the Ministry fully supports the Integrated Urbanism and Sustainable Design Master Program, RUST, between Enchance University and Stuttgart University, aiming to achieve an exemplary outcome which would trigger more international programs of such a high quality. On the behalf of the Ministry of Higher Education, I welcome you today in this second version of the RUSD Symposium that sets a good example for a combined research and education activity within the master program. We all hope to receive a fruitful outcome from the program in this rapid era of change. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for Thank you, Dr. Binyai. Uh, now we work with uh, Dr. Gunther Dinko, uh, the head of the Pasch Coffee uh, Development Program in Arab areas, uh, GIZ Cairo. Thank you very much, dear Excellencies, dear ladies and gentlemen. For me, and on behalf of the German Development Corporation, it is an honor to give some welcome words to the representatives of the governments, the universities, other involved organizations, and especially to the students who are here present. Urban development is not a new issue, but the contents and the relevance are changing. As most of you know, more than 50% of the population worldwide already lives in urban areas. In Latin America, it's already more than 80%. But most of the people who are coming to urban agglomerations or who are born there will not have the possibility to live in well-planned areas with all the needed uh, services. They have to live in the most uh, growing parts of the cities, the slums, quarters, informal and unsafe areas. Urban planning in the academic sector in the past has been often concentrated in the design of futuristic new cities, uh, missing the linkage to the reality of these areas for the poor. Generally, most of the students come from middle or upcoming uh, higher classes of the societies. But to understand the needs of the people are living in the outskirts of the cities, the future urban planners should feel, smell, get in touch, walk, rest and observe, speak with the people in these areas. Only by this they will have the chance to understand uh, 
the situation in these areas and doing their work in the future. Therefore, a change is necessary, and this especially in the developing countries. Of course, some good experience already exists, but are these sufficient? As I learned during the last months here in Egypt, uh, the Master of Science in the Integrated Urban Sustainable Design tries to close the gap between the theory and the reality, the praxis. And I am convinced that I, it can have a significant contribution to the countries of the MENA region. But it is insufficient to get more better qualified urban planners to achieve a sustainable development. Also, there is a big need that the public sector and private planning companies offer job opportunities for these young professionals. Recently, the GIZ got a co-financing by the European Union to improve and, uh, undeveloped or unplanned areas in Greater Ka in Cairo and in Giza governor rates. This will be start now and the target group is roughly 1.5 million inhabitants of the Greater Cairo areas. And of course, there we also need good planners, well qualified people. The Egyptian government, the DAAD, BMZ, BMGF, in cooperation with the German and uh, the universities of the region, are on a good way. Congratulations and good wishes for the symposium as part of a fruitful exchange between knowledge and cultures. Thank you very much for intention and wish you the best for this uh, symposium. Uh, and now, uh, with um, an address note from His Excellency um, Professor Dr. Abdelhawi Khalifa, the Minister of Drinking Water Sanitation uh, Facilities. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor and pleasure to be with you today and to celebrate the opening uh, ceremony for the Symposium, International Symposium in the Integrated Urbanizing Dialogue 2. Uh, I would like to welcome all our friends from Germany, from GIZ, DAD, and Stuttgart University. We're very happy to have them with us in this symposium. Uh, I don't have a prepared speech, but uh, I just noticed that the, uh, one of the themes uh, of this symposium is the landscape. Uh, since I was the governor of Cairo and now the minister of water and wastewater utilities, I have a very hard time was keeping the landscape uh, in Egypt, especially in the new communities. Uh, most of the landscape, they use grass, and the grasses are very uh, expensive to grow. Uh, it uses a lot of water. Uh, in a country has a problem with our water resources, uh, that's why I will take this opportunity to ask you all, please, try to find uh, a way to use the landscape without uh, using uh, a lot of water for irrigation. <coughs> and I know in many dry countries they have uh, what they call the desert landscape. This landscape is still uh, a very nice and, and uh, good-looking uh, landscape, but it uh, doesn't use uh, a lot of water as the grass. That's why we would like to cooperate together and to uh, implement like a pilot for the desert landscape anywhere here in the new communities, and maybe we can use uh, area in uh, New Cairo that the people can see and can uh, use uh, that to save the, our uh, water resources from uh, being used for irrigation. Uh, to just to give you uh, a 
quick view about the situation. Uh, the new Cairo. For the new Cairo, the amount of water, of the amount of drinking water we supply every day for new Cairo, one third of it is used for uh, drinking and two thirds is being used for irrigation. And uh, that creates a lot of problems. Uh, spending this amount of, of drinking water to be used for irrigation. It's very expensive to use uh, drinking water for irrigation. I hope you will be able to uh, come up with uh, certain uh, recommendations or uh, out of this symposium that we can be, we can use and apply in uh, Cairo. Uh, finally, I wish you all the success to the symposium and we are waiting for your conclusion and recommendation. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, <coughs> um, uh, I think the issue of uh, using drinking water and the um, appropriateness of landscape uh, for our dry and hot weather is really um, on the top of our agenda. Uh, we're actually working uh, jointly with Sugar now on uh, developing uh, a model for that, and I'm sure that we'll, uh, uh, we'll keep in touch very close uh, and very soon to. Um, to update you on our findings and conclusions. Uh, may I now in invite my partner, uh, Professor Fis Philip Nisselbitz from Stuttgart to join me on the stage just to give uh, the audience a brief on the ISD and our symposium. Um, so um, just briefly, uh, a brief background on ISD for those who are not yet introduced about it. Uh, the ISD is a, a dual master program that was um, launched two years ago between Stuttgart University and Ayn Shams University. Uh, as you've heard, it's funded by uh, generous funding from three ministries, two from Germany, uh, the BMZ and the MBF, and uh, the Egyptian Ministry of Higher Education. And uh, the fund and the scholarships are being managed and uh, um, uh, helped and supported by the DAD. Um, the study program uh, runs um, in two years, one year in Stuttgart first, so the students go to Stuttgart for the first year, and then the second year they come to Ayn uh, for a semester, the third semester, where they focus on a big case study, usually uh, hosted by uh, one of our partners. For this year, uh, our partner is GIZ, uh, the PDB uh, program, and we're working on a case study uh, called Ice Battle Master, an area uh, on the intersection between the Ring Road and the Obstra. And of course, that's in cooperation, in cooperation with the government. <coughs> Sorry. Um, um, the program then moves to uh, find the last semester with a master thesis, uh, which is usually a problem-based uh, uh, research, uh, where we encourage the students to, um, to, be, uh, to work in close cooperation with society, with reality, with hosts, and uh, to get um, uh, their outputs and recommendations really uh, useful for both uh, the scientific field of knowledge and also the practice. Um, um, I have to say that uh, the ISD uh, can, can never be uh, a reality without uh, first the generous fund from the ministries, but uh, actually it required a lot of support from the, uh, the administration from both universities, so for that I really would like to thank uh, uh, Your Excellency Dr. Hussain Anissa, the President of Ancients, and uh, the vice deans, Dr. Ali Abdelaziz, Dr. Muhammad al uh, and also the dean of uh, faculty for uh, taking the burden of uh, hosting us at least an in chance. And I'm sure on the, sa the same happened on uh, Sugar's side. Uh, uh, without the support from the administration at the university, um, students would have difficulty finding accommodation in Sugar, which is quite expensive, but luckily they managed to get that. And also they have a very fine and uh, well-placed uh, working space over there. Uh, no, I, now I, hand, I think there are going to be more time to discuss a bit more on the program. We have also uh, um, 22 of our students here around, uh, so we can also have a chat with them uh, whenever we have time and exchange and ask them about the details um, about that. We're also available. And now I hand over to uh, Professor Misselbix uh, to give a brief background on uh, the topic and the theme of our symposium this time. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to
to uh, thank, first of all, um, the, uh, Mohamed Salim, my colleague, and his team for the organization of the symposium for the next two days. We had, from Stuttgart side, really nothing to do with it, and uh, which is great, so we can fully enjoy and focus on the discussions. Um, and I would like to thank our speakers, which actually did my work um, by introducing us directly to the theme of the conference. And uh, this is already, in a way, the first panel uh, sitting there uh, because you touched on many different issues that we want to discuss uh, in the next two days. Um, <coughs> but uh, talking for a moment on the notion of resilience, um, uh, those of you who are from the uh, fields um, may think, you know, why on earth are they now talking about resilience uh, like everybody else? And indeed, it is um, a much used term. Some might say it's a buzzword. Others say it's a paradigm for development. Certainly, the, the, the debate uh, on resilience has been with us since the 1970s. So why are we picking on this now? Why are we foregrounding it as a, as a notion for the next two days? Um, we feel there is a, still a lack of actually bringing the various resilience debates and the different disciplines together. And in that sense, this is what we, what we are trying to do in the next two days. This is where we feel there is a need. Because if we are dealing with cities, um, it is not much use to talk about uh, economic resilience and isolation of environmental resilience or resilience in, in urban planning. So, so this idea of actually focusing on the interrelation between the different resilience uh, debates uh, is uh, the reason why we, why we set this as our goal and, and theme, hoping that we can somehow clear the fog a little bit uh, uh, that has uh, emerged around this word and maybe sharpen uh, the definitions and thinking on the um, conceptual but also practical implications uh, of our work in cities. And, um, I'm, I'm very happy having mean, worked with, with these students that are now here for one year. We tried our best to uh, prepare them, but of course, once you arrive in, in Cairo, in this um, fantastic, uh, huge, vast city, uh, they probably think, well, you know, what have we done? And, uh, you know, uh, nothing quite prepares oneself for this experience. Um, but, um, you know, I'm very happy that you are with us, and uh, for you, I hope it's also um, a, a, a great um, introduction to uh, the case study work that we are now conducting in cooperation with the GIZ. So, thank you very much uh, for everybody, especially the GIZ, for making this possible. Um, the, uh, we, we, will have, we have different sessions over the next two days, and uh, we will oscillate between um, sort of more broader sessions that try to bring different themes together, but then also have three uh, more specific sessions that debate uh, resilience um, uh, from the perspective of landscape planning and ecosystem design, um, then uh, from the perspective of urban planning and governance, and then from the perspective of uh, architecture and building technologies, and um, in the introductory session and in the conclusion session, we really try to bring uh, these uh, different discussions uh, back together again. We'll have appointed a chair for each of the debates, <coughs> a person that we felt is uh, very distinguished on uh, this specific field, and we've asked these chairs to help us in composing these different panels. So um, we will have an introduction to the scene, usually set by the chair, and then two contributions followed by questions and answers. Um, well, since we will introduce these themes um, uh, 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 in, for each session, I think there's nothing more for me to say than to really wish us a, a lively and open and critical kind of discussion. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you again here and for the concluding panel, I think, where we try to, uh, tomorrow evening, uh, bring these um, discussions back, to, back together again. Thank you very much. in our first symposium that we uh, uh, try as much as we can to have uh, fish